I'll I was be gonna sending say, you. We need like some theme music, Marcus. We need some theme music. Oh my god, I'm gonna work on that. I promise you, I'm gonna work on that. <laughs> so hello, <laughs> and we gonna dance. We're going to dance. Hello, everybody. This is your boy, Marcus Norman from Gentleman Style Podcast, your host of the number one podcast coming to you live in America. And here we have the incredible, wonderful, stupendous, amazing Miss Latanya Moore Esquire. She is the chief legal counsel and business strategist of I Protect Your Brand. And Miss Moore has an extensive, extensive career practicing law and protecting her and her clients financial assets and we are just blessed here today to have this powerful amazing um lawyer so black business owned of course because that's what we promote that's what we're promoting that's the kick i'm promoting and she's here today to help us help us grow help us learn help us educate our black businesses and take our businesses to the next level and so thank you miss moore thank you so much for your time we appreciate you thank you for being here and we want to just say on behalf of everyone here myself included thank you for joining us today oh my pleasure marcus thank you so much for having me I appreciate you. Yes. So we are going to jump right into things and we're going to get right into the swing of things because I know you guys have been burning with these questions. So we're going to jump right into it. And so, Miss Moore, tell us, how long total have you been practicing laws? And are there any areas that you specialize in specifically that you see the most need or that you enjoy um, helping others in? Yeah, absolutely. So I have been licensed to practice in September, it will be 18 years. So I'm kind of like almost the OG in this, right? <laughs> <laughs> the original OG. Absolutely. Um, but I do, I practice in the area of business law. We do contract work. Uh, I do what's called brand and asset protection. And I also work with people uh, on the investor relations side that are looking to raise capital for, uh, for their companies. So you help you assist in raising capital. That I did not know. That is and when you say raise capital, like through private investors, um, angel private investors, investors, crowdfunding. Uh, we're working with a company right now that's doing a uh, getting ready to do a raise for a mini IPO under uh, Regulation A. So moving into that security side, but definitely we can provide support. Uh, for the folks that are that are looking to raise money from private investors, absolutely. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! That's so big. We gonna change the conversation. <laughs> that's huge. that's a whole nother level. That's a whole other conversation. That's like oh my gosh! I'm I'm so gonna. That means I have to come back, y'all. Y'all heard Marcus. That means I have got to come back, and we got to explore that. Is that a promise? That is a promise. Please, please, please okay. come back. Please serve us, help us, because especially right now, right? R right now, it's it's a pandemic, right? Businesses are struggling. Businesses are, are fighting to, to stay afloat. And so access to capital is the is the word on the street. That's the key um, thing, right? Because without employees, without staff, restaurant owners, especially restaurant industry. Let's just touching on that small sector. Restaurant industries have been struggling because they now have to modify, right? They have to look at options of delivery versus having to sit in, dine in, you know, let me get you drunk <laughs> um, so you can buy more atmosphere. Now people are, you know, their revenue is practically cut in half, but the, the light bill is still due. The water bill is still due. Um, depending on what staff they keep on payroll, you know, they still need a chef. Right. Um, and so that's huge. That's a huge part. And so I told y'all I was, this lady is powerful. I told y'all she's dynamic and right off the bat, out the gate, she is man. So <laughs> what are some consistent mistakes that you see? from a professional aspect that you see small businesses make when getting started or even in operation today with, you know, when it comes to proper legal counseling and, or incorporation or even le legal safeguards, where are we fumbling as business owners? 
today that you've seen? Yeah, yeah. First of all, and this is across the board, just trying to DIY everything. The do-it-yourself model, like now everybody is, is doing DIY, right? I am not saying don't educate yourself. I'm not saying don't don't have information, but there's there you don't know what you don't know. So that's mm. the first thing. I get lots of folks that have used online platforms or they've gone through some other process only to now be in a very bad situation and a costly situation that they need us to assist them with. So that's the first thing. Uh, along those lines, trusting these online platforms, because again, you don't know what you don't know. And the only thing that you can get from an online platform or an assessment type of model is information based on what you put in. Well, if you don't put in the proper information and you don't know what to put in, right, then you're not going to get the best output. Output. The other thing, uh, the last one is, you know, I'm, I'm from Alabama, so we call it the street committee where you're, you know, you're listening to people, you're getting legal advice from people through uh, social media or through somebody that you, that you know, just because this is somebody that you talk to and they're giving you all this advice that you're acting on and you're implementing only to find out none of it was right. And so those are the top oh. areas um, that I see. The fourth, the fourth thing, and I wanna speak to that because you mentioned about restaurant owners and that example, not planning for the pivot, right? Not planning for the pivot. Here's the thing about the restaurant industry, for example, it doesn't take a pandemic for you to plan for, okay, what if we can't have people inside? A pipe could burst, True. right? You could, you could have <laughs> a whole there. lot of things that happen in that industry where you need to have a plan where you say, if we can no longer service guests inside, and I'm just using this as an example because everyone needs to do this, but if we can no longer service guests inside, how will we still service our customers? That is something that should all, everybody, everybody that service customers should always have an alternate plan, right? Either how are you going to do what you do now differently or how will you pivot? Meaning what what is something else that you can do that's closely aligned with your brand that will continue to keep you afloat while you're waiting to see what's happening? You know, what's going to happen in the main part of your business? So you're saying businesses should always be planning. I mean, no one saw the pandemic coming. No one saw this punch in the face where, you know, I, I don't think anyone could have ever imagined that they would have to, you know, shut their doors completely and be out for three, four months at a time. So you're saying um, businesses should always be planning for um, you said that pivot. And that's that's I've, I've never thought about that. And that pivot. How do you predict? Because we always, you know, technology, right? Technology is what put blockbuster out of business um advancements is what shut down radio shack um these are the things we that we always should be considering as if hey what is the new trend what are people gravitating to so that we can accommodate and meet that business need and so for example you know a lot of businesses had to go virtual they had to take their their teams their staff their employees virtually and so businesses who didn't plan for that now have to all of a sudden they have to establish the networks the zooms now we're going to have zoom conference calls now all my employees need laptops now i have to you know buy the equipment to facilitate um the staff and the team and so that we can continue to make revenue and and that pivot is 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 so hard don't you think it's isn't it? No, How do you I don't think it's hard. You don't think so? Okay. Well, let me tell you why. Blockbuster did not go out of business because of technology. Blockbuster went out of business because they refused to follow the trends. They refused to forecast where is this going, right? Because Netflix tried <laughs> yep. to get Blockbuster to partner with them. Yep. So here's the thing. They made a bad business move that led to the demise of their company because they failed to appreciate where the market was going. If you understand where the market is going, then the pivot is easy. Let me give you an example. 
please. I know we're going to talk about this later, right? But these online legal platforms, well, it used to be lawyers doing that. It used to be where you had no choice but to use a lawyer. Now you have a choice. It's an inferior choice, but it's a choice nonetheless. Like it's, it's, it's better than you just putting something down, but just barely. But the point that I'm trying to make is looking at the trends, which I started noticing this about five to seven years ago, but looking at the trends, legal services are becoming more and more online. They're, they're becoming more and more bundled. They're becoming more and more uh, subscription based. Oh, you know, pay $29 a month and you can call a lawyer anytime. Right, right. But you can call a lawyer anytime for free just about anyway. Because almost all lawyers do free consultations. True. Right? But, True. But, but the average person doesn't think like that. The average person says, wow, I pay this $29 a month because when I need a lawyer, I'll have one that I can that I can call. They don't know this lawyer they have. They don't know anything about it. They looking through their paperwork trying to figure out who it is. The point that I'm trying to make is that is a trend that for those of us that operate in this space, we got to get ready because we must say, what is the next phase? Because soon we may be phased out. Those of us that, that do these things, because these are the things that people are going to continue to do. You're still talking about lawyers or any business. Well, I'm, I'm using, I was just using lawyers as okay. an example, okay. but any business should be thinking that way. Okay. That, oh my gosh. That's crucial. So, so, Always watching for those pivots, always watching for the trends, always watching for upcoming um, potential of where the market, where my clientele is, is, is. Been, and I thought about it as you said that, as you were speaking it, I was thinking about, um, you know, the people that do credit repair and the legal shields of the world that are saying, you know, paid our monthly subscription and we'll review your legal documents. If you got a court case, um, we'll represent you at a discount if you you know, need some advice. Like you said, call me up anytime. Um, but like you said, you can, uh, you can always call, call me up anytime because of the free consultations or, um, have me on retainer, which is the same subscription model. Right? And here's the thing that I, that I want people to understand too. And you mentioned this, Oh, you can call a lawyer and you'll get a 20% discount. How do you know that that price is still cheaper than a, than a lawyer? Yeah. You, I mean, think about it. Just because I'm telling you that I'm going to give you 20% off, it still doesn't mean that you're going to pay less because you don't get credit for all for the for the 10 years that you pay $29 a month. You don't get credit for that. True. Very You true. don't get credit for that. I'm not knocking it. What I'm saying is we have to look at the fullness of what is being offered. Because as as an attorney, my competition is not a legal shield. And I'm just using that because that's the company you mentioned. Yes, ma'am. Any the online platform, they're not they're not my competition. Right. So I don't see it as a challenge, but I think we have to be honest with people about what it is they're actually getting functionally. And that's what I see. Absolutely. Absolutely. How do you what are your thoughts around partnerships? you know, partnerships from a legal standpoint. And, you know, should I, if I go into a partnership, should I have a business um, operating agreement with all my partners, some of the partners? Um, what about, you know, couples who go into business together, married couples? Um, sh what, what should I have? Do I need um, an agreement between my spouse? You yes. know, is that needed? Is, is that necessary? Yes, absolutely. See, it, it doesn't matter who the individuals are. You have to look at this as two people going into a business together, whether it's a spouse, whether it's somebody that, that you don't know that just has an, an awesome skill set that you want to exploit as part of the business. You need to always have some type of agreement in place. The agreement protects the two of you. And definitely, and, and here's the thing, it's even more crucial that you have an, that you have an agreement in place if you're married. Because think about this, if the business goes under because of the actions of one of the partners, i.e. the husband or the wife, now your whole livelihood may go down the tank because you didn't have an agreement in place. 
But if you have an agreement in place as the husband or the wife, you may be able to shield all of your personal assets. You may be able to shield all of your personal assets so you never put your home at risk for the sake of the business. What happens is people get caught up in this, well, that's my wife, that's my husband. We don't need to have a, a contract between us. But you, you, you only thought about one aspect of this and you do need a contract. You need a contract for purposes of the business. That has nothing to do with your personal marital relationship. It is for the purposes of the business totally. Because here's the thing, if something ever happens to that union, to that marriage, how are you going to divide that personal property? Which is what your business is. It is personal property. How are you going to divide that? See, now the business can now become a weapon. <laughs> it can become a weapon. Ooh, never thought it of it. A weapon. So what I'm saying is by having that agreement in place, you eliminate a lot of those challenges when things may not be going as well. And that's not just in cases of divorce. It could be something dealing with debt. Uh, what if one of the partners gets on drugs? One of what if one of the spouse like what if what if that happens? Guess what? What if they become incapacitated? Then what? What happens? These are all the things that you have to think about when it's a regular business partner, and you should really be thinking about it, guys, when it's your spouse, because that means your entire livelihood is at risk. Mm. 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 You you you're so right, and you know, I just <laughs> I think do do you even recommend partnerships? Do you think it's a good idea to be in partnerships? Should you know? I can imagine there's just the 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 amount of people that are are watching this and they're looking they're giving the side eye to their partner like babe I, um <laughs> you know sliding over the little contract like just sign here you well, know this, you, have this, to see, you really have to see it as as. This is what I really want people, especially married couples or people that are families that are going into business. You have to see it as protecting your personal interest. Right. Not you as an individual, but as a person that's a part of this union or this family unit. You really have to see it that way, because now you take the stigma away from having a, a, a contract among family members or a spouse. Do I recommend partnership agreements? If you're going to work in a partnership, absolutely. I recommend some. I recommend an agreement if you are a sole proprietor. You need to have something written. You must have something written. It may, it's not going to be a partnership agreement, of course. But if you have a single member LLC, you need to have an operating agreement. So that if something happens to you, and it could be something short of death, but if something happens to you, someone needs to know what your plan is for this business. Someone needs to be appointed. Who's going to deal with these clients when you're incapacitated? Especially now doing COVID. Think about this. There are people that get on ventilators. Get Ill. Yeah, if what happened? Sick, the business shuts down or my portion of the business shuts down. But what happens to the client, though? Not just the business shuts down. If you're in the middle of working with the client, your business could get sued. You could get sued. They don't care that you're that, that you're sick. You failed to fulfill the you failed to fulfill the terms of the contract. You're so right. You're so right. We don't think so, about that. No, we don't. We don't. I, and I said, y'all. I said she was powerful. Did you see? Did y'all see that fire? Right, that just came out. She was. <laughs> she sees this every day and we don't protect our business. We don't protect our assets. You know, any partner that gets offended, you know, if you're trying to legalize and protect, just like she said, she said the key word, protect your interest. And it doesn't have to be a, a spitting match. It doesn't have to be evil or malicious. Hey, I, th I think this is my interest or my or what I bring to the table. How do you feel about it? Do you agree? Do you disagree? If so, let's 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 solidify that and get it in writing. Um, even even my family, I do I I do business and my family supports my business. And my parents were like, we need something in writing. 
number one, because we're dealing with a lot of money. It's not, it's not pennies. It's not a hundred dollars. It's not $200. It's a lot of money. And so, you know, even in that aspect, it's family, but we need something in writing. We need to, but to it's not family. It. It's business. It's business. If I ask you to invest a thousand dollars, I'm just using a small number. If I ask you to invest a thousand dollars in, in my business, I'm asking you to invest in a business venture versus dad. Can you give me a thousand dollars? Cause that's not what that conversation is. You're saying, I want you to invest in a money-making opportunity. That's so that's not the same thing. No. Okay. You could, you could ask your dad for a thousand dollars cause you want to go on a trip. <laughs> True. Right. True. Very so true. I'm saying that that way because we got to get out of this thinking that, well, it's family. Oh, oh, we're cool. We ain't cool when it comes to investing money. True. Period. We're not cool. I need for you to tell me what it is. What's the what's the expected return? When can I expect this return if I'm going to get it? And what's the likelihood or the chances that I won't get the return or my money back? You have to have that real deal conversation with whoever you're working with whether it's family or not powerful powerful what what about the name of a company just the name i want to start in that very small piece choosing a business name How, what legal um thoughts should be going through my head in choosing a business name i you know if i decide to open a a, a <laughs> um a company and you know, call it Amazon. What's the legal ramifications of me calling my, you know, my company Amazon? Um, what's the legal ramifications of, of just choosing a business name? And what things should I be thinking about when deciding on a business name? Uh, well, first of all, whether you call your business Amazon really depends on the industry. Like what happens depends on the industry. So if it's if it's in the same industry as the Amazon that that's the big big Amazon you won't make it like you're going to be completely like they're going to make sure right that you're that you're shut down so to to go with that example you want to ask yourself is there someone else in my industry with a similar name and the reason you want to is you don't want to be confused for them and they are not going to want to be confused with you and some people think, oh, well, it doesn't matter. We're just in the same industry. It does when you're talking real business, when you're talking about commerce, if you're going to try to protect intellectual property, it's definitely going to matter. Because if it's very close to a similar product, a similar brand, a similar name in the industry that you are working in, it is a high degree of likelihood that you will not get approved for your trademark high 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 degree of likelihood i just had this i just had this come up even in my own business and yes i do have my own lawyers uh what <laughs> i do have my own lawyer wow. that's how yeah i do have my own lawyer the and lawyer so, has a lawyer we you know my 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 lawyer who i was talking to about my particular IP um, situation was the exact, it was, it was that I said, look, this is what I found. You know, I'm trying to figure out all these ways, but at the end of the day, could we probably have done it? Yeah. But is it worth it? Right? So that's the first thing when you're thinking about a name. The other thing too is how likely are you to stick with that name? Is that something that you're doing right now to test or are you firm that, this is my brand. This is what I'm going to be sticking with forever um, or for a while while I have this business, because all of those things matter when you start looking at what should you do with regard to intellectual property. So, for example, if you feel like, well, you know, it's just, you know, Marcus Norman pizza today, but I don't know. I may change that down the road. <laughs> well, then You want to make sure that you don't you know, start investing in trademarks and all these other things because it's going to essentially be a waste of money if it's not if it's not a brand that you plan on seeing all the way through. So you have to definitely weigh your options and just determine, are you serious about this name? 
the other thing too that most people don't think about always get the domain name even if you're not going to use it really buy the website name buy it ahead of time yes before you put anything out even if you don't have a website get the domain why because there are going to be people that see what you're doing and it's awesome they will go and buy that domain before you can get it and they will hold it hostage where you will have to pay them thousands of dollars to get that domain wow oh a lot gosh. of people don't know that and they do it all the time wow oh my gosh that's powerful you, you, <laughs> did y'all hear that did y'all hear that buy the domain name if it if it's a thought in your head buy the domain domain name so that no one can lock you out of, of yeah, your I mean, potential. Yeah, I mean, twelve dollars a year, right? To, and 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 look, here's the thing: if you don't if you don't end up doing anything with it, then you just cancel it at the end of your contract, right? You just cancel it. You don't have to continue. But what if it is something big? It's true. And now you can't even get the domain for it because somebody came through and they scooped up your domain. I've heard I've heard people buy multiple domain names so they buy several just to lock it up to make sure that no one can kind of backdoor you know change it up add a add a letter take out a letter you know they buy multiple domain names so that's that's powerful and, and you need and to also look for that i'm sorry you need to um you need to also look for that uh make sure nobody's adding an s at the end right or like you said taking the letter out this is something you could search you can search if somebody is adding an S to the end. You can you can search. One thing about Google that's good, you can spell something wrong and still find what you're looking for. Try things like that, that any phonetic spelling of your brand name, see if somebody else is out there operating under it in a different spelling. They may not spell it just like you, but you have to always be on the lookout for what's happening with your company. Oh, my gosh. Oh my gosh, tea. She's spilling the tea, y'all. She's spilling all the tea today. Today, you're not gonna get this anywhere else unless you um professionally seek her out. So, <laughs> so you you saw you said this earlier. You you mentioned it intellectual property. What is intellectual property? And once I get it, how do I protect it? Wow, so the top three. Because there, there's five, but we're just going to talk about three because these are the ones that people really pay attention to. Uh, copyrights, trademarks, and patents. So last year, I think it was last year, 2018, 2019, I think 2019, uh, the Supreme Court uh, made it clear that there is that that essentially there there's no there's no poor man's, you know, trademark and copyright, meaning in order for you to bring a claim it has to be registered. Now, what are they? Your copyright will protect an expression of an idea, not an idea, but an expression of an idea. So if you have the thought about a book that you want to write, the, the thought and the idea, you can't copyright. But once you get the book, you can copyright it. Okay? A okay. song, you got a jingle in your head. Once you reduce that to either a recording or you write the musical notes or something like that, that expression is what is protected. Now, the great thing about copyrights is that once you register it, it is protected. Right. It is protected. You own title to your copyright for your entire life plus 70 years. Wow. This is why when these stars die, this is why their families are living it up off their royalties. This is copyright. This is why it's important to do it. Who wouldn't pay a hundred dollars so that their children's children's children, 70 years, children's 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 children are living off of the work that you did because it's so valuable. Trademarks. Now the trademark uh, protects something that that is uh, that identifies you, right? Identifies your brand. 
So think about the golden arches, right? No matter where you go, you already know who that is. McDonald's. Right? Think about the swoosh, right? Think about just do it. All of these things, when you just by hearing it, you know who it is. That is how that that's how you think about trademarks, right? Um, it it is it is who you are in the marketplace. What do you represent in the marketplace? And then patents, of course, are revolutionary things that are inventions, meaning nobody else has done it. It is something new. Now, the thing about patents that's really interesting is that you have exclusive use in the marketplace for 20 years. 20. That means 20, two decades for 20 years. After that, after that, anybody else can do it. Unless you renew, unless nope. you... Nope. Anybody else can do it. Wow. Because here, here's the thing that a lot of people don't don't realize is that intellectual property is under the Department of Commerce. So the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office and all of those, um, they are uh, under commerce. Which oh means God. they want to continue to flow a business. Right. <laughs> So, right. so that, that's the thing, because remember, when you invent something, it's for the use of the public. Not just yourself. Yeah. Think about that. It's, it's for it's for the use. It's for the use of the public. It's something that is revolutionary. Uh, it's something that that is new. And you and, and you want to make sure they want to make sure that it can be freely accessible uh, within commerce, within the marketplace. So mm-hmm. that's the thing that you have to think about. Now, trademarks are the ones that you have to continue to renew, right? You have to definitely, you have to pay, you have to continue to use it. You have to also uh, pretty much attest that you're still actively using it in the marketplace. And then you have to, uh, you have to renew every so often, right? So there, there are time frames involved with that, that, um, you know, are dependent upon what exactly it is that you're that you're doing. OK, OK. In the age of 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 online business and re- online retail, what if I'm running an online um, business, a virtual business, what could I what could I protect? What could I trademark? What could I what? Give me an example. If I'm so if I am running a consulting business, what would I trademark? What would I have to protect because um my 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 product my sir oh, okay i'll give you one i'll give you one i'm i'm running a, a a online um tea i sell i make homemade teas and brews and and you know different potions and lotions so what would i trademark what would the i name. protect the name of the company. well first of all for for let's let's just not even say trademark let's look at the intellectual property of what you just said the name Right. There's a difference between Lipton tea and Arizona tea. Right. 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 Why? Why shouldn't we know what Marcus's tea is? True. Just because you sell it online doesn't mean that it it doesn't that the name doesn't have commercial value. So you definitely want to do that. We didn't talk about trade secrets, but your recipe needs to be protected. Right. Ah. If If you put Coke and Pepsi in a glass. Right. You don't right. know which one is which until you taste it. Until you True. taste it. If you're familiar with both. True. Right. You you True. know what it is as soon as you taste it. And so that the way that 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 the, the recipe itself is trade secret. That means because think about it. That's that's the brand. That's true. That is the brand. And so for you, for example, although you're selling teas and it may be like, oh, I just sell this tea. There may be something about your tea, and it probably is, that's different from the next person that sells tea. Wow. Your your taste may be different. The way that you, the the way that you actually make the tea, everybody doesn't make tea the same way. They just don't. Some people put the sweetener in and, and, and boil it in or however they, or however they do it. Some people, the ones that ain't from the South, you know, they wait until it's cold to try to try to make the tea make the tea sweet, right? 
Right. Um, but what I'm saying is your your methodology from a recipe standpoint is a trade secret. The way that you do something uh, definitely can have some intellectual property value. So don't don't diminish the, the, the value of what you have just because your business is online versus brick and mortar. That's so true. That's powerful. I'm a, I'm gonna take it a step back. I'm I've jumped into the realm of my product. What about my employees? Right? What about the team, the people that work under me? How do I minimize my risk, my exposure um from them? Um because lawsuit is a new 401k, right? Uh uh uh, uh all it takes is one one slip up, one accident, one, you know, that's what messed up papa john's when he made his remark publicly and you know people got at him off of what he said how and and now you know that was a big slip up but <laughs> um how do you protect yourself as an employer from your employees um what are some of the risk risks um of that of hiring someone just one person you know it doesn't have to be a slew of people but just taking on board one person i think we don't we don't take that into consideration everybody wants to say, oh i got 10 employees i got five employees but there's a risk to that what is that risk what is what should i be concerned about wow i mean honestly it could be limitless right because right. you have to think about how are they impacting your reputation OK, this is why the, the Central Park or the dog park situation, this is why that woman got fired, not because she called the hmm. police on on Mr. Cooper. Right? right. Right. She got fired because of the backlash. They fired her from her job and she was she was off duty. True. Right. So True. the risk is employees out doing things like that. Or a lot of these people, these nurses and doctors and people like that, that are on social media um, having very negative uh, derogatory things to say about African Americans and other people who they service. Now they are fired, not because of their viewpoint, but because their viewpoint has a negative impact on the company and the company's ability to thrive and be profitable. So that's one thing, right? How can your employees' conduct impact your bottom line and your company image? The, the other thing, too, is you have to think about data privacy. OK, a lot of people don't think about this. You're getting people's email addresses. You're getting their uh, you, you're getting their their credit card information. Oftentimes mm, mm. You're getting their, their home address. If you Ow. do any shipping. Right. You know everything about these folks. You know right. where they live. You have access to, to them financially, your employee, your employees do. Uh, the other thing, too, like, let's just go back with the T situation. As gross as it may sound, but what if you have a disgruntled employee that decides that they're going to spit him? Oh, my gosh. Mm. It's nothing, right? <laughs> You're right. You are so right. You yeah. are spot on. What are, some things, what are some things that some people can do? Right. And a company will never recover. I can't remember the name of this company. And some of you may not even be old, may not even have been born when this happened. But there was a pizza company where someone um, put bodily fluids into some of the food. And it was a disgruntled employee. And that restaurant that had been there for decades never recovered. Mm. Never recovered. I mean, who would eat there? Nobody, Even not me. In jail, right? I wouldn't eat there either. Be like, yeah, y'all got to change this to something else. Like, I just sell, so, just you know what? Move, like, just move <laughs> somewhere else and, and where nobody knows you and just start over. Because, oh so God. what I'm saying is, there are a number of ways. The other thing, too, is they can start stealing your customers. True, and start their own because now they got your secret. They have your recipe. They have your clientele's name, their names, their addresses, like you said. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> going back, and you probably answered this earlier, but going back to um, business, right, and marriage, um, how do you protect yourself um, if you own a business 
and you're going into marriage is that protected via a prenup or those um operating agreements um and and what should i do to um set myself up for success and protect what you said those those individual interests and not to say you want to cut them off you want to be inclusive as much as possible you want to include them hey i run a small business um this is what i've accumulated this is what i'm doing in in the community um let's find a mutually beneficial way if we ever had to exit this you know what how do you protect that especially um when going into marriage and pursuing marriage and relationships you know and 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 on and going into the into further with that well i think you can protect it both ways if you decide to do a prenuptial agreement right that's one thing uh but in your in your business documents it it also you can account for that in your business documents OK, if you if you're in a partnership with someone, you have to really think about that. You have to think about what happens if this if this married person gets divorced or what or dies. Right. Because remember, for purposes of business, it's essentially the same because now that spouse has a property interest in that. If you don't set your business up right. Jeff so, Bezos. The, OK, the first so the first thing is um understanding what what you need to protect and what do you want the outcomes to be that's the first thing the other thing too from a marital standpoint especially if either this is a second marriage um or there were children prior to the marriage that is not the child of the of the new spouse because there are some sometimes people want to make sure that their kids have certain things and they had this vision before they even met that person. But you take care of that with either or and uh, a prenuptial agreement, certainly, but also really on your on the business side is where you can really, really take care of things like that. Now, in terms of the benefits of it, right, if you're making and your your if your draw or your salary, how you have it set up, from your business is millions of dollars and, and those millions of dollars are coming into the marriage. It's really about the millions of dollars and not about the business, right? Because now this person is now accustomed to a certain lifestyle, but that has nothing to do with the business side of things. That doesn't mean that that person can come in and get a percentage of the business. That makes sense. That makes sense. Someone asked, <laughs> this is off script. Someone asked, okay. Um, protection of your brand includes also the type of things your brand is associated with outside of the workplace, correct? What What is your outlook on getting involved with social justice movements? I have no idea what he's talking. That's my brother, y'all. I have no idea. Do you understand what, he, what his question is? Yeah. I sure don't. Okay. Yeah. So so my, my point is this. I think as, as a company, you have to decide uh what 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 role your company is going to take if any what position you're going to take but you got to think it all the way through and prepare for any fallout so what i'm saying is you can be excited about something you can you can step out and you can say this is the position that we're taking but there's always a risk involved i all i I can't think of any of my clients that are not a part of some type of social movement, right? It may not be the big ones that we're talking about now, but they all have pet projects that are near and dear to their heart and where they park their philanthropy dollars and, and where they speak about some of them are extremely outspoken because they've decided that this is a cause that is important enough that their brand uh, be connected to it. Gotcha. Jamali Douglas, that's my brother. That's my brother. Um, we grew up together. Um, great question, bro. Um, I hope that answered your question. If I not, so. if not, um, get back at us. Yes, please reach out. Um, reach out to to Miss Latanya. Reach out to me, and I'll connect you, or I'll invite you to the group. Um, <laughs> what ri what risks? How do I protect myself from the government? 
is there a way to protect my business from the pause of, you know, not necessarily, I guess that's the IRS tax division. That's the IRS. But how do I protect my business from the government? Is there even a way to do that? Is there even a way to protect the government from coming in and, you know, taking my intellectual property, you know, you know, taking my, my, my um trademarks and and shutting me down essentially or 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 putting me out of business um i've never heard of anybody taking intellectual property in in the way that in the way that you describe but there may be reasons why that may happen right if you if you lose the the business or you mentioned the irs so let's say that there that there was a tax matter and they decided that they were going to foreclose yeah they can actually put a lien on anything that you own whether whether personally or or in your business, depending on how your business is set up. The first thing is setting your business up correctly, making sure that your personal assets are shielded and then understanding what needs to be in your personal name, what needs to be in your business name. This is why you work with somebody that can help you do that. Right. And that's you. That's and it ain't, yeah, it's yeah. me. It's a whole lot of me's out there, but it's yeah. me. For those of you that's watching today, <laughs> right? Because Google Google Law School is not going to help you with this, right? Sure. Street Law is not going to help you with this because this is something that's intricate that you have to have a working knowledge of how this works to be able to make sure that it's done properly. Mm. Powerful, powerful, powerful. My my last few questions. What three books would you recommend that every man or woman um, purchase and invest in in themselves for personal? I'm big on personal development. I, I myself read a ton of books. Um, my library is huge and growing. What 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 books would you recommend um, men and women buy in regards to business or, or even life in general? What what do you recommend? Uh. This may sound cliche, but the first one is the Bible. If you mm. don't have one, download the app. It's free. Uh, and let me tell you, let me tell you why. And this has nothing to do with Christianity, but it's about principles. It's about understanding the the law of uh, investing and getting a return on your investing. You know, as Christians, we call it sowing and, and reaping, right? Um, under, understanding seed time and harvest time. When is the time for you to plant? When is the time for you to collect? Right. When is the time for you to to uh, get your get a return on your investment? Right. The other thing, too, is understanding principles. So you'll find the principles in like Proverbs. Right. That's where you'll find a lot of principles. You'll find a lot of wealth principles in like Ecclesiastes in Deuteronomy in those, you know, those books. You'll find things with, you know, how to how to structure business in terms of, you know, um, collaborative partnerships. So you'll find things like that in, you know, like I said, in Ecclesiastes and in first and second Chronicles, you know, if you study, um, definitely if you study Solomon, right. And, and mm -hmm. Solomon's life, you see a lot of these principles and a lot of times people won't read it because they just like, Oh, that's just Christianity. And you can think that but it's some gems and that thing, that will help you. <laughs> that will help you put a plan together. If you if you read it for the principle that is involved. So that is why I say right. that the second one, actually similarly to what I just said, is Forty Eight Laws of Power. Forty Eight Laws uh, of Power. Forty Eight Law. Forty Eight Laws of Power. I'm writing that down. You know, yeah, and, and when, you, when you read it, when you read it, let's talk. Because one of the things that uh, when somebody recommended this to me, the first thing I was like, oh, Lord, like the thing got a bunch of pages. But once <laughs> I got off into it, once I got off into it, I could I could read this book and I could see why certain things happen to me in certain situations, not just in business, but in life. When I used to when I used to work my my corporate job, you know, my corporate attorney job, I could see why things happen because I did not understand the laws and the principles of power. And when you understand the laws and the principles of power, you're going to always be in control because you will be able to understand how to navigate these different situations. The third one that I would recommend for all of you, especially startups, is how to stop brand stealing thieves. I wrote that book and I think it's exceptionally um, beneficial. 
<laughs> for everybody <laughs> that's in business, you need True. to get that book True. and you get that book on Amazon. Shameless plug, but I'm going to put it out there. Do it. Do it. <laughs> Please. We need it. We need it. Because it's 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 out there in the age of information. You know, we shouldn't be we should not continue to remain blind. We should not continue to remain blind to all this knowledge, all these resources, um, all your years of education that and study that you did to attain the level of knowledge that you did. Um, who's your hero and why? You know, I was thinking about that. Um I've been really, really thinking about who is my hero, because when I think about a hero, it's that it's that person that that saves you. Like when I think about a hero, right, that that's what that's what I think about versus someone I would like to emulate in a way. Uh, but my person actually is a little bit of both. And it is actually Dr. Miles Monroe. Huh. Um, yeah, I, I Love uh, him. well, you know, it's interesting because in in reading and studying and and listening to um, a lot of again, I'm a I'm an application practical, you know, type of like I love, you know, principles and laws and things like that. I don't know if that's because I'm a lawyer, but I love those. <laughs> um, but I think when you when you understand uh, yourself, for those of you that believe that, you know, we are tripartite, right? Um, there's a spirit, there's a, you know, there's a soul or mind, soul or mind, and there's a body. When you, when you understand how those things work and you understand the principles behind the, the hierarchy of those, then there's, you, you become unstoppable at that moment because then you understand all the things that are happening around you and you understand how to navigate those things, but you also understand how to stand in your authority in all these different situations. And those are some of the principles and things that I learned uh, by studying some of the teachings of Dr. Monroe. So uh, yeah, it, it was, I mean, this was years ago, but you know, it was, it was definitely amazing. Wow. Wow. I, I've just been re reintroduced to Dr. Miles Monroe, and um, I, I need to finish the book that I was given on him. Um, I jump from book to book. I never um, stay one place at one time with my reading, and, that, and that's bad. But I'm always like thinking of a question. And I was like, oh, I got the book, and I'll jump to this book, and then I'll think about, oh, it's over here. Let me grab that book. So, Dr. Miles Monroe, I need to finish that book so I can get a firmer grasp. But what I've read about him thus far has been um, tremendous and impactful to me. And not just in business, but personally to me. Um, so thank you. Thank you for reinforcing that. That's confirmation for me in here to, to get back to. <laughs> I love to confirm that is my, that is my uh, superpower. Ah, where's your cape? I need to see the case. What What do you wish? What do you wish that you would have done known that you know now that you've known back then when you first got started? Um, you always need a like a mentor or a coach. Uh, a mentor. Let me let me stop there. <laughs> you always you always need a mentor. You always need someone that can. Uh, help guide you, uh, not give you a five step to success, but really can help guide you um, in, in, in ways and also hold you accountable, right? People that can, that can hold you uh, accountable. And those, and, and let me say this, you don't know everything, even if you've been doing it. And I learned that lesson very hard. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. How can my audience get in contact with you? How can people reach you? Websites, your Facebook, your groups? Yeah, um, absolutely. Social I'm, media. I'm everybody to uh, connect with me in the Legal Proof Your Legacy Facebook group. Um, it is truly a marketplace resource 
that is really the best place to uh, connect. And um, from there, you know, you'll get me uh, pretty much all throughout the day. <laughs> um, but it but it definitely gives you uh, gives you more of um, more a ro more of a robust experience around some of the things that uh, Marcus and I spoke about today. So legal proof your legacy, Facebook legal proof your legacy with a tiny more. Yes, yes, y'all check out that page. Check out that um, Facebook group. It is tremendous. It is powerful. It's been powerful and epic to me. Thank you, Miss Tanya. Thank you for coming on the show today. Thank you all for tuning in and and subscribing and checking us out today and learning with me because this was powerful for me. Um, and so, Miss Tanya, I appreciate you. You're incredible. You're wonderful. Thank you for what you do and please continue to do what you do because we need you. We need you. We we are not going to make it um, into the next decade and beyond without um, impactful women, impactful entrepreneurs like yourself doing what you do every day. Um, so if you ever had a shred of doubt, if you ever have those days where you're like, man, what am I doing? Please, um, please, we need you. Um, we need you and thank you. We are, we appreciate you for Oh, thank you. You're you're welcome and uh I I appreciate that very much. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. So everyone, this is Marcus Norman and Miss Latanya Moore Esquire signing off from today's episode of Gentleman Style Podcast. Like always, take care of your friends, take care of your families and take care of business. This is Marcus Norman and Miss Latanya Moore Esquire signing off. Love you. Bye. Appreciate y'all.